Hello, and welcome to Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. I'm your host, Luke Howard. These organ concerts are streamed live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Mountain Time. And previous episodes of Piping Up are also available for on-demand viewing on the Tabernacle Choir's Facebook page and YouTube channel. And you can find out more information about this concert series, including downloadable program listings for this week's episodes, at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Today, our organist is Brian Mathias, performing at the Schoenstein Organ in the Conference Center on Temple Square. He opens with the third movement, Allegro Maestoso, from Mendelssohn's Organ Sonata No. 2. Now, this movement is actually a recomposition of an organ nachspiel, or recessional, that Mendelssohn had composed more than a decade earlier. He simply added in a dotted rhythm to make it a little more majestic. One of the last pieces composed by Léon Bollmann before his untimely death in 1897 was a Ronde Française. Bollmann studied at the École Niedermeyer in Paris, a music school focused specifically on church music, and that shows through in Bollmann's sacred vocal and organ works. He actually won first prizes not only in piano, organ, composition, counterpoint and fugue, the standard subjects of a conservatory education, but also in plain chant, which most other schools didn't teach. Scattered throughout his other compositions are works, including this one, that harken back to medieval folk song. And I'm going to suggest that they're not all that far removed from the sacred traditions with which Bollmann was so familiar. The word ronde in the title of Bollmann's Ronde Française refers to a medieval dance, a circle or chain dance in which the participants held hands and moved together in simple steps, often while singing a lively refrain. In other countries, it could also be called a carol, or in German-speaking countries, a reigen. And the words could be either sacred or secular. In fact, some medieval accounts tell of dancing a carol or round dance in a church while singing a hymn. That kind of celebration isn't typically found in Christian church services today, but it does recall the numerous reports in the Old Testament of praising and worshipping God through dance. 
Just one example from Psalm 149. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp, for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. The great Christian apologist C.S. Lewis once said, the most valuable thing the Psalms do for me is to express the same delight in God which made David dance. Compared to the traditional practices of regular church attendance and praying that for many believers constitutes their devotional activities, this type of physical corporeal praise of God might seem a little indecorous. And yet C.S. Lewis points out that the very idea of sacred dance is something astonishingly robust, virile, and spontaneous, something we may regard with an innocent envy and may hope to be infected by as we read the Psalms. I'm not suggesting that Bollmann's Ronde Française is actually a sacred dance, only that it wouldn't be completely mistaken to recognize in it an element of joyful, worshipful celebration.
We just heard the Largo in G, a transcription of the aria Ombra Mai Fu from Handel's 1738 opera Xerxes. The opera itself was a complete failure at its premiere, but the instrumental transcriptions of that particular aria have kept the gorgeous music alive and popular for the last 200 years. Handel's Largo, as it's sometimes called, was actually the first piece of music broadcast over radio in 1906. Brian will now play his arrangement of two well-known melodies. First, the traditional hymn, Come, Come, Ye Saints, followed by the popular children's song, Jesus Loves Me, whose tune was written by William Bradbury nearly 180 years ago.
Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor is certainly one of his most popular pieces of music, if, in fact, it is by Bach. The jury is still out on that question. But regardless of who actually wrote it, for more than a century, audiences have associated this music with scary movies, and they have good reason. Building on the tradition of accompanying silent films at the piano, Hollywood soundtracks beginning in the 1930s often turned to this work to underscore scary or frightening scenes. And that has continued, sometimes ironically or humorously, up to the present day. It's a fascinating process to observe when the audience decides what a piece of music means, quite independent of the composer. So, in that regard, and with Halloween just around the corner, Brian will conclude today's concert with the seasonally appropriate and thrilling Toccata and Fugue in D minor, most likely by J.S. Bach.
Thank you for watching this episode of Piping Up with organist Brian Mathias. You're always welcome to return for the live stream of these concerts every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And previous episodes of Piping Up are also available for on-demand viewing. Piping Up, Organ Concerts at Temple Square streams on the Tabernacle Choir's website, Facebook page, and YouTube channel, and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.